Why We Form Knots. I'm your guide, Dr. Daniel Lopez. Growing up, I had many knotted muscles throughout my body. They were in the trapezius, the muscles that run next to my spine, and then I also had a bump in my low back near my tailbone on the right, and these areas were always painful. Nothing that I tried worked. I would spend time looking for corners to try to push into to try to relieve the areas that I couldn't reach. I would lay on tennis balls, golf balls, or any other item that I thought would help. I would twist in a chair many times per day because I felt like my spine was so rigid and it felt like it always needed a pop. And I couldn't figure out why those knots were there. But what I did know was that I was always uncomfortable. More important to me was that I couldn't figure out how to make the knots and the pain go away. I was never given a good answer or a satisfactory answer to why that was. I was told things like muscles were stupid, that they were just like that for no reason, and many other vague answers that didn't offer solutions on how to resolve them. I tried different things from doing nothing to injections. Not one thing worked in making the knots go away. Osteopathic treatment by an amazing osteopathic physician was the first thing that I felt that finally yielded real results. You know, the type of results where I actually felt better and felt that I was even getting resolution of things for the first time. It was like being in a new body and experiencing a freedom that I had never experienced before, not even as a child. Even then, I was still not clear on why we get knots in our muscles. At that point, I was training as an osteopathic physician and was hopeful to find a more useful answer that could lead to solutions. As I became more advanced and experienced in my practice, I began to understand why. I began to form theories based on my observations and results. What I'm talking about is isolating a knot in a painful area for a patient, applying a treatment, and then having resolution or a significant reduction in pain and sensitivity instantly, not hours, days, or weeks later. I mean right then and there. This helped me to understand how knotted muscles behave. So here is what I have observed. A knot in a muscle will form in response to dysfunction or disease. Whether it is a protective mechanism or not, I cannot really say for sure. But let me give you an example. First, let's make the example as simple as possible. In this case, we're talking about a normal muscle that has two points of attachment and a joint in between them. Most muscles are far more complicated than this and cross over many joints. When the muscle contracts, it produces a change in the angle at the joint. Muscles and tendons, which attach muscles to the bones, have sensors in them that help monitor the tone and the length of the muscle. So when everything is perfect, the muscle that should be relaxed is that, relaxed. When things go wrong, however, the muscle or part of that muscle will contract. So then, what kinds of things can go wrong? Let's do some scenarios. Imagine the muscle example above with the muscle having two points of attachment and a joint in between. Now imagine that something happens that changes the distance between the points, even if it is just by a little bit. Let's say the joint becomes compressed or slightly torqued. Now, the distance between the two attachment points of the muscle is changed, even if just slightly. In this case, the two points have come closer together. And a couple things happen in this case. Because the two points have come closer together, the muscle becomes slack and no longer has its normal tone. And this causes a change in the tone of the muscle. Reflexively, the muscle, or part of the muscle, will contract. Why? Well, I suspect this has to do with the sensors in the muscles and its tendons monitoring its tone and length. The muscle tries to maintain normal tone and will reflexively contract to do so. We also have nerves giving feedback about the joint, telling the body that something is wrong. So now we have a muscle that is partially contracted in response to a structural change in its anatomy. Because the muscle is partially contracted in an abnormal situation, it is also more sensitive. This means that the nervous system has sensed that something is wrong too, and has responded to that abnormality as well. This may also be causing some of the muscle contraction. And then finally, I just want to point out that this contracted muscle is weak. So why is that? Well, the answer is because a muscle has a finite amount of contraction. This means that a single muscle has a limited amount of contraction. And if a part of the muscle has to contract to maintain normal tone, it is already using up some of its limited contraction. And a muscle that does not have all of its resources available to contract, by definition, is weak. This doesn't even take into account that the joint isn't working well. Now it's hard to imagine that the change in length would be significant enough to cause much of a problem. This most likely would be true, except most muscles are not so simple as above. Many muscles cross multiple joints. 
The trapezius, for example, is involved with crossing over a dozen joints. A shift in the whole shoulder blade, one of the places where the trapezius attaches, could change the muscle length by a significant amount. A curve in the spine can significantly change the distances for the larger muscles, including the trapezius. And this is a reason that I believe trapezius knots are so common. I hope at this point that you understand the example we just went over. However, this is not the only thing that will cause a muscle to form a knot. Local irritation can cause muscles to knot around it. For example, disease, traumatized, or infected Infected tissue, such as an inflamed appendix, can cause the muscles to contract around it. In these cases, the muscles are contracting around irritated inflamed tissue. This means that something wrong in a nearby area can cause a muscle to contract. And I suspect it's a protective mechanism and can be part of the same thing as what I was describing above. So to sum things up, a muscle will involuntarily partially contract, producing a knot when the anatomy it is associated with becomes altered, inflamed, or irritated. Next, let's answer the question of how long will a knot stay? 